March is looking to be a pretty wild month of new PlayStation 5 game releases, and I'm excited for Gran Turismo 7, I'm excited for some of the other games coming in March, but Ghostwire Tokyo has recently really taken my attention. This is a game coming from Tango Gameworks and published by Bethesda. Yes, this is a game being published by Bethesda, and it will in fact be on PlayStation 5. In fact, it will be a PlayStation 5 console exclusive for a duration because the deal was worked out by Tango Gameworks, Bethesda, and Sony to make this game a PS5 exclusive before Bethesda was acquired by Microsoft. Obviously, that deal will be honored. The game will also be arriving on PC. It will not be seeing a PlayStation 4 release, so I find that rather interesting. When this game was initially announced, I had a pretty healthy level of anticipation given that it's Tango Gameworks and they did a phenomenal job with The Evil Within and more so The Evil Within 2 in my opinion. I thought that game was terrific and now we have a brand new IP coming from them in Ghostwire Tokyo. And when we initially saw the trailer I had expected more of a game that really leaned into the horror elements and it does have horror elements but this looks a little bit different in the sense that Tango Gameworks is taking more of an action adventure game approach than a direct horror game game like they did with the evil within now again it has its horror elements but it is definitely a action heavy game first also seemingly has a pretty compelling narrative attached to it. The game notes Tokyo's population has vanished and deadly supernatural forces prowl the streets using arsenal of elemental abilities, we'll get to that in a second, to unravel the truth behind the disappearance and save Tokyo. The game's official description page also notes face the unknown, uncover the truth, and save the city. Tokyo is overrun by deadly supernatural forces perpetrated by a dangerous occultist, causing Tokyo's population to vanish in an instant. You're gonna ally with a power powerful spectral entity known as KK, and you as the main character Akito have to work with KK, you're gonna have your abilities that you can harness, and you're gonna have to save the city and uncover the dark truth behind the disappearance as you face the unknown in Ghostwire Tokyo. Obviously, one of the main elements of this game is the first person action combat, and I was a little bit surprised when we found out this was gonna be a first person action oriented game. But once we saw the gameplay of Ghostwire Tokyo, I was all in. Evil Within was a third person horror title. This is a first person heavy action game. And also, unlike with the Evil Within, this is not a linear game. This is more of an open game where you are going to have various traversal elements. And that's going to be a huge element of the game as well. But I want to focus on the combat itself. Again, the main character is Akito and he's possessed with KK. And that gives him access to certain abilities. In the demo itself, we see a lot of elemental abilities wind fire and water abilities are all harnessed throughout the game and on top of that with those abilities you're going to upgrade them throughout the game and how you chain the different abilities it looks like it's going to add a level of style and a variety to the game as well right away when you look at the gameplay in action super stylish game seeing akito utilize various hand signs in first person to do all of these different abilities definitely different than what you see out of a first person action game typically and in these more open single player titles first person action oriented elemental abilities utilizing hand signs and that's not all from a combat standpoint you're gonna have different weapons as well we saw bow and arrow we saw mystical weapons we saw talismans being used chaining everything together the elemental abilities the other weapons the traditional weapons the mystical weapons the bow and arrow that looks like it's gonna add quite a bit of nuance to the game from a combat standpoint and on top of that this isn't just a first person action game fight a bunch of enemies no traversal and exploration are also at the heart of this game there are some platforming elements and you'll be able to grapple throughout the game go from rooftop to rooftop and across that, you might find various enemies over there as well. And that looks rather interesting. There's going to be various points of interest, and you're going to have a detective style mode known as Spectral Vision that'll kind of guide you throughout the game, and you'll be able to see where you need to go. And also, circling back to the combat, this is more of a visceral game. I'm not going to say based on the demo that we saw from the PlayStation Showcase. It doesn't look to be, you know, incredibly bloody and gory, but again, it's super flashy, and there are some more visceral kills that you're gonna do to these paranormal beings and also these paranormal enemies some of them look pretty wild in its own right as well and it looks like there's gonna be a wide variety of abilities and how you want to tackle each instance again when you couple the abilities with the variety of weapons the traditional weapons and the mystical weapons you're gonna be able to use from a combat standpoint i'm hoping that there's a healthy level of variety that is gonna be in the game and challenges with the different elements weapons that all should be fun to use very much different than other games and it gives it a unique look as well 
well. And that's what I noticed out of Ghostwire Tokyo. Look, we see a lot of single player action oriented games with this one from a presentation standpoint with this setting, the aesthetics and how the combat is stylized. I think it gives it a very, very unique flair. It was Tango's first non-linear game as well. So that does worry me a little bit. Hopefully they make a smooth transition into creating a non-linear title and it is a bigger world. They're trying to do Tokyo justice. So it'll be interesting to see how they convey that. They did note 2,200 map segments in the game, millions of objects, which that doesn't really tell us much, but a lot of objects. And they did also note the next gen hardware mitigated a lot of the potential technical worries in the game as well. Uh, so yeah, that's why it's not on the PlayStation 4. This is a game that just needs to be on next generation hardware by the look of it. And being on the PlayStation 5, the sound direction was a very big part of the game. And it took advantage of the PS5's 3D audio and even simple things like kicking and knocking over crates and boxes uh, result in pretty realistic sound effects and even knocking over crates and boxes results in pretty good sound effects that is going to be hopefully immersive to the game and you want a healthy of level of immersion into this game. Again, being a shift from The Evil Within, more of a horror game from a sound direction standpoint. With a horror game, they did note, you know, they go for more of a, a soundtrack that'll amplify the anxiety and play off that in an action-oriented title. Rather, they want more of a positive soundtrack that engrosses you and empowers the player, especially with how how powerful Aikido and KK are. So that is going to be an interesting thematic shift from what Tango Gameworks has worked in the past. And also with KK by your side, while you can also use powers, you'll also uh, be charging your synergy and you can wire in mode and that's going to boost your overall power as well. And with elements like the grappling hook, the elemental abilities... And the setting of Tokyo, they definitely wanted to do that justice. They note, explore a unique vision of Tokyo twisted by a supernatural presence from its ultra-modern cityscape to its traditional temples and narrow alleyways discover a hauntingly beautiful city teeming with yokai, vengeful spirits of spirits that prowl the streets. Discover iconic landmarks like Shibuya Crossing and Tokyo Tower stunningly rendered with incredible detail and built to take advantage of next-generation technology experience. The city frozen in time with the city's population disappeared and traveled to the surreal underworld on your quest to save your family obviously with the thematics of the game and everything going on with the various yokai and tokyo just to put it in short going to hell uh it retains some of the beauty of tokyo but also you have to account for the fact that well things are going to hell so it'll be an interesting dichotomy to see how that plays out in the full game and the fact that Tango Gameworks is stepping out of their comfort zone, going from the linear experience that was The Evil Within and going into a sandbox first-person action-heavy title, this could be a great building point for them to create other sandbox titles and go into this other route of gameplay and lead to whatever their future projects are going to be. However, it should be noted that, again, uh, Tango Gameworks is a Bethesda-owned studio, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Probably the games are going to be exclusive to Xbox and PC uh, after Ghostwire Tokyo. The only thing I'm kind of down on with Ghostwire Tokyo, and it's a route a lot of other games are doing, this gimmick of the Digital Deluxe Edition having to pay $80 and you can play the game quote-unquote three days early. Not a big fan of that, but a lot of games are going that route. But overall, what I'm seeing out of Ghostwire Tokyo, I am incredibly compelled by. Hopefully, the game does build a healthy level of buzz and anticipation as we are getting closer to its late March release. I know there's a lot of games coming out uh, recently. Elden Ring, Horizon, and March is stacked with a bunch of new releases. So, it is definitely a time to, you know, spend your dollars sparingly. But Ghostwire Tokyo is definitely one that's high up on my list of upcoming games I want to pick up. Let me know your anticipation level for Ghostwire Tokyo. Is it a game that you're all in on? Are you a little bit skeptical? Sound off in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads. And we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.